Well, Bitcoin's really taken off and uh, some might call this a surge, but I got to tell you, there is some volatility ahead for this week. But the question then is, what is the reason for the surge and what is going on? Well, there's a couple of on-chain data, just if you didn't know that Bitcoin in circulation, over 50% hasn't moved in two years. This is a report from Glassnode. It was uh, tweeted out from Andrew Pompliano. And he says the exact same thing. You know, one out of every two Bitcoins in circulation has not moved in the last two years. And he states, we've hit a new all-time high of 53% today. And I got to tell you, I don't know if uh, people are just expecting things to go up or if they're waiting to sell or what it is. But I mean, almost half of people not moving their Bitcoin, I think, is a positive sign. But if we really break it down even further than that, we can see that this is from Into the Block. There is a, a report called Holders Composition by Time Held. Now, we took a look at two years, but if you look at for a one year plus, almost 70% of people have not moved their Bitcoin in a year or more. Now, one in 12 months is 23%, less than a month is 8%. But the big shocking thing that I can take a look at is holders making money at the current price. What does this mean? It means that the people that are in the money, three quarters of people are in the money, meaning that they could sell right now and they would be profitable. Out of the money is 22%. And then, of course, right in the center or right at the money is 3%. There is something to be said that if you've got 75% of people who are in the money, which means that they should sell or could sell, but they are holding 53% for two years or more, 69% or one year or more. It says to me that I think we've got a lot of room or at least some room to run here for the price to go up. Because when there's supply and demand, when people aren't selling, but there's a lot more demand, what happens? Well, usually the price goes up. On top of that, there's also some positive news that addresses with a balance of more than one Bitcoin has also hit an all-time high. We're actually, let me just blow this up real quick so you can see a little bit better. Uh, address one balance of one Bitcoin, all-time high. We're at 993,000 of wallet addresses with more than one Bitcoin or almost a million right now. So that means one million wallets have one Bitcoin, which would be, you know, 1 million Bitcoin. And it is true that uh, you can have multiple people. Maybe if you have 10, 20, 1,000 Bitcoin, you have multiple wallets. It is true that you could have uh, more than one and it's a little bit skewed. But I got to tell you, if you just take a look at the time frame as far as what is going on, as far as uh, more than one Bitcoin, it's only been going up. So I see that at positive news. And then lastly, of course, we can see that there's been quite a surge in the price uh, today. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't see some uh, some more volatility. We we're at 27, under 28,000 uh, just yesterday, and now we're almost hitting at 30,000. So that to me is positive news. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. But again, there is some volatility coming up and it's volatility could be good. Depends on, on which way you look at it. Just so you know that this week we've got the CPI numbers, the Shanghai upgrade for Ethereum, and the FOMC meeting. Now, me personally, I don't think that people are going to sell in mass all their Ethereum for the Shanghai upgrade, which happens on April 12th. But uh, just be ready for a little bit of a swing. Now, there's a report out that uh, not the majority of people are in profit from the people who had staked their Ethereum before. So to me, I think that uh, it could be volatile, but I don't see a major, major dump where, you know, Ethereum goes to like, $100 or whatever people were talking about. That I think to me is just ridiculous, but I could be wrong. Thursday, we've got PPI numbers and Friday, the all important earnings reports comes out. And I got to tell you, if uh, earnings comes out and it's very bearish where industries don't hit their, their uh, reports or how much they think it's going to be and the stock market, NASDAQ, S&P 500 starts to wane and go down, but yet Bitcoin and crypto remains the same. I think that'll be a very telling of what's gonna happen for the rest of the year. So just expect some volatility coming up. Let me know what you think, where things are going. I personally will play it either way. I might just hold off on some, some DCAs to see what the FOMC meeting are, what the PPI numbers are and QO and earnings are, and, and maybe just hold off for that day just to see what the news is. And if the market goes down, well, then I buy. Or if, if the news comes out and it's very bullish, well, then I immediately buy. So it just depends on which way you want to say it. And then lastly, just to go over some, because we talked about some good stuff, let's talk about some, some FUD, some fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And there was a uh, article that just came out from the New York Times 
which talked about how damaging uh, Bitcoin mining is and how much electricity we use. This is from Bitcoin Archive. And they state that uh, the article implies that the ability of Bitcoin miners to switch off when demand is high, like in Texas during a snowstorm, is market manipulation. Look, Riot Blockchain here in, in Texas, they made a deal with the electrical grid and said, look, if you don't want us to mine Bitcoin for a specific amount of time, just tell us to shut off and uh, just pay us a little money and we'll shut off the rig so you can power all the houses here in Texas. And they've done that quite swimmingly. It's worked out pretty well for both parties. So it's not mark manipulation that, that New York Times talks about. It's something completely different. And the article itself, I was going to go over it, but I refuse to pay for the New York Times. I just do. But here's what it's going to talk about in, in the article. I read snippets of it from little postings. Really what it says is that Bitcoin is, is an abomination and we really shouldn't be using it because it, it, it costs so much for electrical use. This is an article I linked in the description. Bitcoin doesn't waste energy. Yes, it does cost a lot and it does take a lot of energy to uh, use the platform or, or mine Bitcoin, actually 9 million per day or 3 billion per year. But here's how it's justified. A significant portion of Bitcoin's energy consumption is generated from renewable resources. Bitcoin consumes energy that is otherwise wasted, such as flares, which gas and those type of things, which otherwise would just be a waste. Bitcoin consumes all the energy that the free market will bear at a free market rate. And the nature of Bitcoin energy demand will improve the efficiency of energy grids. And this was a, a gentleman, Troy Cross. He's a, uh, a Bitcoin OG. And this was actually uh, told to me by Beardy. So shout out to Beardy where Troy says, look, uh, the article in New York Times, Food waste emissions equals 57 Bitcoin networks. And he says, food waste causes 8% of global carbon emissions compared to Bitcoin's 0.14. Let's end food waste. Then Troy also tweets out this, the New York Times piece on mining is packed with misinformation, but the most staggering thing is that it doesn't attempt to describe to the reader what Bitcoin actually does worldwide. This is intentional. If you understand Bitcoin's value, then of course you think it's a waste of energy. So to keep this very simple, this is for... Maybe if you're new to the channel, new to crypto, and you haven't seen this before, or maybe your name is Elizabeth Warren, Senator of Massachusetts. Uh, this is how to explain Bitcoin. And in, in, a, in, in a nutshell, it's very simple. Bitcoin is money. Money is a tool. It helps people store value and conduct exchange. Here's a store of value. $20 in 1980 would only get you a cart full of groceries, which is pretty good, actually. One Bitcoin in 2011 would have gotten you the same thing. Fast forward 10 years later or 20 years later for, for the dollar, you're getting half of what you would have gotten. And 2021, one Bitcoin would have got you a very nice $69,000 car. Now, if we extrapolate that till 2030 or in 2022, 20 bucks can't get you squat for just go to the grocery store right now. 20 or one Bitcoin in 2030, who knows? Might buy a, I have no idea, a mansion. It's anybody's guess. But as far as store of value, that's what Bitcoin does. As far as conduct exchange, I can buy anything right now online. I can pay for things right now with Bitcoin, all types of things. So that is money. On top of that, it's scarce, it's only 21 million, and the belief is only growing. So when everybody was frightened and calling you when the, when the banks were failing, and trust me, I know they were calling you, going, where should I put my money? I don't know what's going on because I hear about these banks failing. Well, guess what? That's when Bitcoin works. So all the money that's... Uh, for electricity and things like that, that is what it's all about. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Then just to, to finish up, finish up, there is uh, taxes coming up for Americans on uh, April 18th. And there was a good piece from Coin Ledger. And I don't know if you knew this, but you can gift crypto to people, members of your family, up to $12,000, and that, is, uh, that eliminates your tax obligation, just uh, in case you were wondering. And what I wanted to do was uh, I want to bring on uh, David Kemmerer. He is the co-founder of CoinLedger, just to follow up on what's going on with CoinLedger so you can make your taxes easy. So let's just jump in. This is the final push. I just want to make this quick and easy, a little quick update. So, of course, CoinLedger, yeah, people know about it. has been talking about it forever. Use it the last two years. Very easy. If you haven't caught uh, me... Uh, David and the resident tax attorney, uh, we did a, a live stream uh, where we talked about everything you need to know as far as taxes and crypto. I'm going to link that in the description. But what I want to talk about real quick is for those people who are doing their taxes this week and this weekend, 
I had a personal story. My CPA, I had to contact her and said, hey, what do you want for, from me for all my, my information? Because I'm using a new CPA. And I said, I got CSV files. I've got IRS forms. And I've also got tax filing software for everything I do with crypto. And then she just said, yeah, just give me the CSV and IRS forms. And I was like, well, good thing they're here. So David, uh, talk to us about that real quick for people who are filing this weekend. Yeah. So here we're in CoinLedger. You can see this is you know your account. And depending on what type of activity you have, we'll report everything for you. So for you, Rob, you know, you'll, you'll download that CSV income report and that capital gains report and then send over the IRS 8949 and Schedule D to your CPA. And they will know exactly what to do with those types of forms. Um, and so snag those, send them over and you're on your way. Yeah, perfect. Thanks for making it easy because I'm tired of like doing everything on like uh, spreadsheets and stuff like that. And then, yeah, you know, that's what we're trying to be in the business of is abstract away all the complexity and make it simple for people and not have to think about it. Exactly. And a couple of things you guys just did an update with XRP and with ADA. We did. Yep. We launched XRP integration. So, you know, if you're trading or if you're holding that within your ledger or anywhere, you can pull all of those transactions into Coin Ledger automatically now. Same with Cardano. And we have a bunch more queued up to continue rolling out. Perfect. And then there was one more thing that uh, that caught my attention. I know a lot of people have worthless NFTs. You guys rolled out this service where you could sell them for tax loss. But then you also talked about doing it for, and you said rug pulled. Mm -hmm. Rug pulled fungible tokens for the same thing. Just quickly explain to us how that works. Yeah, what we're thinking about is, you know, we built essentially the smart contract that will allow anyone to send an nft and receive a small amount of ethereum in return and that's you know essentially a trade where you're realizing the loss on your nft we could do the same thing for fungible tokens so i we've the reason we thought about this is we've been requested by it by a lot of folks is mm. you know maybe they're holding a whole bunch of tokens that have gone to zero they were rug pulled but they actually don't have a simple way to dispose of those tokens to effectuate you know and realize a tax loss and so we could essentially trade with that person, again, a small amount of ETH, then they can realize that whole amount of losses, which, you know, depending on how you're investing, could be thousands and thousands of dollars. So similar to the NFT thing, but we could essentially be the ones who are buying that and thus helping people realize losses and save a bunch of money on their taxes. So if anyone would like that, you should drop us a comment. I'd be fascinated to learn if that's somewhere we should spend our time. Yeah, I like that. I mean, there's a lot of fun, a lot of tokens that we got rug pulled, so I can see that, especially with the NFTs. And then lastly, uh, this caught my attention. One of your tweets, I think you just put this out a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. 10 ways to legally reduce your crypto taxes. And these are things that, that we know, invest for the long term, harvest your losses, do things when, uh, as far as uh, donations. But this one, number five, give crypto gifts. Gifting crypto is tax-free. You don't have any tax obligation unless you've gifted more than 12060 over your lifetime. In addition, receiving a crypto gift is not considered a taxable event. So here's my question. Uh, if you got gains and you wanted to, I don't know, maybe I want to gift something to my wife. Could I do that? Or maybe I want to give something to my niece. Could I, could I gift her some crypto? And not wife is anything? complexity because it's likely that y'all are filing a joint tax return, thus your yeah. income. You know, so that that's probably that that would be uh, tougher. But yeah, like your niece, that's a great example. You can gift assets, cryptocurrency being one of them, tax free up to that threshold. Um, and so they aren't realizing taxable income, and you aren't realizing the gains on the appreciated assets. So it is one of the best ways. Um, again, if you have someone who you want to gift, um, that is tax free. Okay, everybody. So great information. And then lastly, before we get out of here, uh, there's a link in the description and it looks just like this. Again, I show you how to use a tax software, how easy it is from the time that I started up, the time that I finished takes about 30 minutes to send it over to my CPA. And of course, she asked for some different things and then off we go. But David, that is it. Anything else we missed before uh, we go into this terrible season of <laughs> filing our taxes? Final week. No, I appreciate always having me on. And for anyone who needs help, just chat our customer support team. We'll be quite busy over the next week and we'll be firing back responses real fast. So just let us know if we can help in any ways. And again, thanks for having me on. Bob. Excellent, everybody. All right, David, thanks so much. Let, Ray, let's jump back. All right, David, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. It's interesting stuff. Again, Coin Ledger links in the description, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Again, 
Crypto and digital assets is not a set it and forget it. It's pretty important that you stay up to date with these things, so it might behoove you to subscribe. That's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.